I was thinking about this morning. I hate marijuana gear. I've never been privy to marijuana gear. Yeah. Okay, I do not like it. Uh -huh. There's no reason why I should have a shirt with a pot leaf on it. Yeah. And then get mad if a cop pulls Yeah, why me put over. a target on your back? Yeah, I've always been one of those guys. Yeah. So whenever people give me anything marijuana-ish, I always throw it away or I give it to whatever, the, the home over here, this place on North Hollywood. Here. Yeah. Some guy gave me a sh There was a dispensary. The guy was a baker. Him and his family got together, and he was a baker in Beverly Hills, and we opened up this little dispensary in, in a in a head shop in Hollywood, and he went out of his way, and he made these gorgeous shirts, and it was just a shirt, not even marijuana, but like that heart with the thing going around it. What's it called? The Hemp? No, not fucking hemp. The, the, the fucking what they call these people. That smoke marijuana. They call them something. Compatriots or whatever okay. the fuck they are. Who knows? All right. Who was the symbol for that? Didn't really, uh, you know, it wasn't like a joint or something, but it really wasn't the, the, the symbol for marijuana, but people knew it as the medical marijuana. People in the shirt. know, no. No. Yeah. So it was a, a weird yellow shirt. And I liked this shirt. It was fucking comfortable. You ever have a shirt that's Absolutely. just fucking comfortable? Absolutely. And then I had another shirt that I found like that, the same manufacturer, like a fucking Walmart in Houston. And I bought because that's where you shop when you're fat, Houston. <laughs> and that's, oh yeah, when you're a fat fuck. <laughs> Houston you, is yeah, the place? Houston's the place All because right. they cheat you on the sizes. Like right now, what are you, a medium? Yeah, I'm a medium. In Houston, you're a fucking double X. Okay. <laughs> because they make you big, so you get to go, I'm losing weight. Give me the this. cheesecake. You know what I'm saying? They don't want you fucking missing <laughs> meals. So what the fuck are we talking about here? Yeah, I forgot. The yeah. symbol of the shirt, the, the, symbol, the comfortable shirt, the, the yellow shirt. The comfortable shirt. So I get up one morning. I got to go to My Name is Earl. I think I'm taking the yellow shirt I bought at Walmart. Yeah. But once I get in the fucking car... And I'm driving, I look down, and it's the fucking symbol shirt. <laughs> That's the last thing I want on a TV fucking set, especially on an NBC show. You're not that fucking stupid, Joey. But I was already three quarters up there. Yeah. I couldn't turn around. I looked for like a clothing store. Again, 2X is not going to fit. I'm not walking on that set looking like a two-pound bologna in a one-pound bag. So that's not going to happen. So I tried to turn the shirt around. Now. Yeah. I turned the shirt around. Well, the guy had the symbol on the other side, like something fucking He had you crazy. covered. So as soon as I walk into your set, people are like, what up, man? Everybody was like, I'm like, what? Oh, hi. And I didn't know what was going on. And then <laughs> I looked at the fucking thing, and I'm like, oh. So I knew, like, I was telling you when you walked in, that when I went to that audition, I hate those, those producer ones, those five-man rooms. Yeah. I do well in them. I don't dislike them. But when I saw the look on your face, it took that, like it made me say. It was just joy, man. I was happy to see you it, there. You know what I thought? I was like, I'm, I don't give a fuck now. Like, it's my dog. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. He knows what I can do. Yeah, absolutely. Fuck the lines. Let's just go for it. I don't yeah. give a fuck if I sing an opera song. He knows what time it is. Auditions are rough, man. I, 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 I get stressed during auditions, yeah, you know, so because, uh, you know, it's so hard. And, and, and the, I think the hardest part about auditions and being an actor is you come in and you read for, for a part. And what you don't know sometimes is, you know, we'll have, I mean, a pilot, you'll have, you know, whatever, 100 people come in there and read for it. But just, just an episode of TV, maybe 10, 15 people come in and read for a part. You could have hired nine of them. You know, nine of them could could have been great. They could have been fine. But you got to pick somebody, right? Some people look like what is in your head. So it's their job to kind of lose it when they come in. Other people, you think, oh, that's, that's not what I had in my head. And then it's their job to get it, and that'll happen too. But everybody just gets a no for the most part. You know, it's not like you get a no with an explanation or this was how it ranked. You came in third, you know, nobody, you know, and you, so you just got to brush that off your back and keep going. But that would, that would be very tough. That would be very tough for me to be like, what, well, you know, was I close? Was it, you know, to not get that feedback. You're on a set, you're acting, you get the feedback. Somebody say, I'll do this line this way, this way, this way, you know. A lot of times with the auditions, it's going so fast or it's just the casting director reading and you're looking at it on tape, you don't have the time necessarily to work with somebody and give notes and, you know, you try sometimes when you can, but you don't always give people that benefit. So you come in, you get one shot, and then you don't necessarily know why, you know, it didn't work. My first two years, it would bother me. Yeah. Like, not bother me extremely. I mean, I'm not stupid. I know when it's a bad read, you know. I would try to prepare, you know, I went to acting class, the whole fucking thing. <laughs> and 
my whole thing was cold reading. Once, when I got here, you're going to understand this, I had a manager that was way better than what I was. Mm -hmm. So he was getting me into big time rooms, and I was falling apart at the seams. But once I put comedy and the auditions together, and I just said, this is a seven minute set. What the yeah. fuck am I doing? What am I turning this into fucking Chinese arithmetic for? <laughs> I was going into like Stanislavski. This is fucking comedy. Yeah. This is what I do. What yeah. the fuck? That's when it started clicking. But it wasn't, it took about three or four years of auditioning to get over those whys. And then one day I realized I got the breakdowns. And that is the worst thing you could do as an actor. Yeah. You will shoot yourself. Because you think you're right for 20 things. <laughs> and when you don't go out for all 20 of them, you're, yeah. you're killing your agent. But there's variables involved. There's directors who have a brother-in-law who's retarded and needs a job. Or his <laughs> wife's going to fucking leave him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they know that they stuff. They're they not going to waste know. your time with going so in there. So that was a one mistake I did that once I've never gotten the breakdowns again. Yeah. Like I stopped in 2005. Like that was it. That was a year of torture. That was a year I hated everybody. Why am I, why am I not going in for this? Because there's fucking variables involved. Yeah, now. you don't know what the fuck's involved. They already knew. when you write something. Do you know ninety percent of the time who you want, Mister G? Sometimes. I mean, sometimes you write yeah. it. You, sometimes you write it with somebody in mind that you know is is, but it's a type, and you know that you're not going to get that person or that person's busy or something. But a lot of times, especially now, you've worked with so many people, you're like, oh, okay, I think I can, you know, I can write this, and I think I can get them for this or whatever. Yeah, you you have an idea in your mind, and that that takes me back sometimes to the audition process. If I don't get that person, and somebody walks in and they look nothing like the person, then it's hard for me until they start opening their mouth, and then then if they get the part, then it's like they earn that part, because then it was like because I was predisposed as soon as they walked in to go, ah, it's not the, that's not what's in my head, and then they change what's in your head. And that's, you know, that's pretty spectacular for them to do that.